Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me today. If this is your first time here, welcome. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so that way you can stay updated with all the other videos that I release in the future. In today's video, we are going to do a dog flower skull and it's actually a lot of fun. I've taught this class many times in my studio and one of the things that I'm amazed with is the uniqueness and the variety that all the students bring to this particular painting. So in the video today, it's actually a lot faster than some of my other videos, but I want you to use it as just a template as you build your own painting. I want you to swap out colors with your favorite colors, swap out designs with things that you want. Like I said, just use the video as a template for the process of creating this. Um, what you're going to see in the description box below is a link to a supply kit and that supply kit is everything that you need to create this particular painting. You will see that I threw a palette knife on there and you will see me do the background in my palette knife style. If you don't have a palette knife, you can use um, an old credit card or something that just has a nice hard surface uh, that you could scrape with. Uh, one of those even putty scrapers will work well or you can do it with a brush. You don't have to do it with a palette knife like I do in the video. Another thing that you're gonna see in here is a link to a traceable. And a traceable is a way for you to get that initial image, that initial composition on your canvas before you even start painting. And for my first time in beginner painters, this is an excellent tool for you to utilize to take out some of those intimidating steps with getting started painting. So take a look where, the, where to acquire your traceable. And then there's also a video on how to transfer your traceable. So check that out. Another thing that you're gonna see in the video is if you take a look at the background of the canvas before I even start painting, you will notice that I am reusing a canvas. Um, and it's really nice to reuse canvases to get more practice so that way you're not spending a whole lot of money. So check out the video that I put together on how to reuse and gesso one of your canvases. So again, basically just want you to keep painting as much as possible. All right, so again, like I said at the beginning, make this painting your own, put different colors, add some glitter, add some rhinestones, change this up, change the colors, make it your own. And when you do that, send me a photo. I really wanna see what you guys create and how much you kinda of go off the beaten path of the video. All right, a uh, quick note to my first time in beginner painters, relax. Don't take this so seriously, it's just painting. It's not the end of the world. And this is one of these um, activities that you will find that the more that you do it, the more that you paint, the more comfortable you're gonna get with the brushes and the easier it becomes. So enough talking, let's go ahead and get started painting. All right guys, I hope you're ready to paint. These, uh, this dog flower skull is gonna be a lot of fun. So make sure you've got your favorite music on, all your supplies gathered. Uh, don't forget to take your progress photos, like always. And once you've got your traceable transferred to your canvas or your panel, you're gonna take that small pointy brush, black paint, and you're gonna outline all those lines you just transferred. And this kind of solidifies our uh, composition on here. Now we will redo this step at the end, so don't stress about this being perfect, and play with the pressure of your brush. The harder you push your brush against the canvas, the wider the line it makes. The lighter touch, the skinnier the line. So again, just play with that comfort level. If you're one of my beginner and first time painters, take a deep breath for me. You're doing great. Just All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. And now we're actually gonna use the palette knife. And this is what I use in my artwork at my studio. So using the knife, you're gonna pick up some of the purple and using the long edge, scrape thin layers from the black paint to the edges of the canvas, from the perimeter of your dog to the edges of the canvas. And you can see here that, you know, just kind of scraping in all different directions, fill up that space. 
Um, I'm not putting that paint on there really thick. I'm scraping it because I like that texture underneath. Um, you can use the knife in actually many ways, so kind of go with what works for you. And I tell all my students, trust your instincts. They are naturally going to guide you in the correct direction. And when you trust your instincts, if you do end up painting something that you don't like later, or you get your uh, color somewhere that you don't want it, just let the paint dry and you paint right on top of it again. It's a really nice um, uh, medium to use for beginner and first time painters. So if there was a point to take or pause the video and take your progress photos, so do that. And now I'm just grabbing some white and I am layering it on top of the wet purple paint and still just kind of scraping with it. Um, don't overthink this process. Just kind of slap it on there, move the knife around. You may create a, a lavender color. You may get something different. If you want to add some other colors in there, play with your background. It's nice to have a very expressive background. Um, and it's a good, good place to really warm up and kind of get into the groove of painting. If you end up putting too much of the white on there, you can always go back to the purple and add more. Like I said, you can layer acrylic paint um, as much as you want. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo, and we're going to move into the inside color of our dog, and this can be any color that you want. Uh, if you want to leave it white, you can just pick paint white canvas on there if it's a reused canvas, or you can leave the actual canvas white. Completely your call. All right, again here I'm using that small flat brush, filling in the whole interior space of my dog. And if you happen to go outside the lines, or if you happen to paint over those black lines, do not stress out, it's just paint. We will reapply those outlines at the end of the painting. I know it's intimidating painting at home or doing this for the first time, but just relax. It's just painting. It's not the end of the world. And you're actually better at this than you give yourself credit for. All right, so I'm going to grab actually a little bit of orange and just kind of slap in the color on this wet yellow paint. And you can see how I just kind of put it on there. And then I wipe my brush off so that way I can kind of blend those colors. And just using light pressure, if you want to use your fingers to do this blending, go right ahead. But this is a nice way to blend wet paint into wet paint. And it can only be done while the paint is wet. If you happen to put this color on too dark, just go back to the yellow and paint right on top of that dark shade. And just grabbing some orange for the nose of our dog. Again, any color you want it to be. So you saw that I wiped the brush off really good, grabbed a chunk of white, and kind of put it in the highlight area in the middle of his forehead. And again, just moved my brush because that yellow paint is still wet and blended the two together. You can kind of think of this as contouring the face of the dog. We're putting highlights, lighter areas where the highlights would be, and the orange for where the shadows would be on the dog face or the dog skull. If you left your uh, dog's face white, you are you're actually skipping all this step, so you can move ahead to the next portion of the video. All right, so now we're moving into doing the designs. Oh, I'm actually the eyes, sorry. Eyes can be any color. I'm using a light purple for this guy. If you want brown eyes, you can use your raw sienna. If you want blue eyes, feel free to switch them out. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. And again, we're going to be moving into the design. So you can use uh, what I'm doing next just as reference. So we're going to put some sunflowers um, hanging out around our dog. because These are supposed to be for flower skulls. So I'm using burnt sienna and doing the centers of my sunflowers around the dog. And they're really just kind of half circles because they're half hanging out behind our dog. You are more than welcome to use a different flower or different design in your background. 
All right, so grab the small brush and I'm just kind of slapping that yellow on there. And again, wipe the brush off and do a little bit of that blending of that yellow into the burnt sienna. And by wiping the brush off, it just helps you kind of move the wet paint without introducing more color, without having color on your brush and adding it to what's there. And these, this kind of blending, we're going to build on this for the whole painting. So as we do these flowers um, and even the bone that we're doing right now with white paint, um, we're going to be building on all of these skills. So the bone, if you want to reference the original image and you can draw this on your canvas with Sharpie, it is basically a rectangle with each end of the kind of the... Um, I'm actually not sure what you would call that on the bone, uh, but the ends of the bone, it's almost like a heart shape with the tail cut off. So generally I'd draw a rectangle and then do a heart shape where the tail is inside the rectangles, if that makes sense to you. And I am putting that paint, white paint on there kind of thick to compensate for the purple that's underneath. All right. Back to the small pointy brush, we're going to go to yellow paint and we're going to put the leaves of our sunflower in here. And don't overthink the leaf process or the petal process, not the leaves. Um, these are almost kind of like teardrops for our sunflower here. And we will be putting a second layer and I believe I changed the color of the top sunflower further on in the video. Um, but if you're using student grade paint, it is more transparent than artist grade paint, so you will need to apply it thicker or apply a second coat if you are using student grade paint. And again, these are kind of teardrop shapes with the fatter part next to the center of the flower. And this is just the first row of petals that we're doing. We're gonna go back and just do the tips, these little kind of skinny triangles in between each of the petals of our sunflower. Again, as you're working on the petals, mind the pressure of your brush. And if you want to practice the sunflowers on a spare sheet of paper, go right ahead. All right, hopefully you could pause the video back there. Don't forget your progress photo. And I'm going to kind of move into some of the designs inside of our dog. And as you're thinking about your designs, don't try to over plan or plan the entire design because that can be kind of overwhelming if this is your first time painting, but just kind of take it one color at a time. So I like to use, um, kind of do a center design in the middle of the forehead. And I chose a heart here because I have a lot of people that paint their pets and are honoring them because they have passed when they're doing a flower uh, sugar skull like this then moved into blue or teal to do the designs around the eyes. And again, if you're using student grade paint, it is perfectly okay if you need to do two layers to make your uh, colors more opaque. All right, you're doing a good job. You do not have to keep pace with the video. That's why it's important to pause it when you need to. And check in with yourself every now and then. Make sure you're not holding your breath. Laugh at yourself for a little bit. Take a deep breath and keep on painting. Again, it's nice to just do something with your hands. Let your mind go in a different direction and just let go of your day. Any frustrations that you had, any um, irritations, things you didn't want to deal with. Um, you just let them go while you're painting. All right, don't forget to pause the video and take your progress pictures as needed. All right, so one of the options that I give when I teach the uh, sugar skulls or flower skulls is the use of a Sharpie marker. You do want your paint to be completely dry before you put your Sharpie marker on there. And for me, it's just sometimes it's nice to do these little curly Q designs with the pointed uh, Sharpie marker. There is nothing wrong if this is what you choose to do your designs with, and you can actually use other colors in the Sharpie collection. But if you want to challenge yourself, 
Continue to do this with a brush and again, play with that pressure of your brush. All right, going back to the brush, going back to some designs. Again, you can make these any color that you want. And as you're thinking about the design, just keep it simple. Lines, dots, simple geometric shapes that you're comfortable creating. And the more that you paint, the more comfortable you'll be get with making more complex designs or complex lines. But anytime that you can break it down to be simple shapes, the more fun you're gonna have and the less stressful it will be. Because again, you're supposed to be relaxing, remember? <laughs> nice, he's coming along really well. Again, don't forget those progress pictures every now and then. And then keep in mind that while you're painting, you're really close to your painting. So get out of your chair every now and then, walk 10 to 20 feet away and look at your painting from a distance. Um, it looks very different from that distance compared to the two feet in front of you that it might be when you're painting. So again, remind yourself to get out of your chair and look at it from a different perspective. We do tend to like things in life better from a distance compared to up close. Artwork is not immune from this fact. All right, this guy's turned it out really cute, so... I think we do some more designs on the inside of the dog. Um, and then we'll be returning to our sunflowers, adding another layer and uh, doing some more work and some colors out there. All right. Doing good. I'm proud of you for painting at home. I want you to keep painting. All right, pause the video and take your progress photo. Now we're gonna move into our flowers again. And like I said earlier, I am making the top flower darker. So I'm taking the pointy brush, orange paint with a little bit of red, going for that kind of burnt orange, and just going right on top of all of the petals. We will be utilizing, um, putting a highlight on these petals like we did uh, when we were doing the contouring on our dog's face. So you'll see where I kind of wipe the brush off, I put a, kind of a slap of white to the left of every single petal and then use that dry brush Oh, I used yellow instead of white and then use that dry brush to kind of soften the transition between the two lines again it's kind of nice that we introduce a skill and then just kind of keep playing with it so you get more comfortable and we're going to repeat this for each of our sunflowers the bottom two sunflowers, I will keep those more yellow. So here you can see I'm going back to the yellow. When you're doing your highlights with that yellow and then we'll use white when we get into the yellow sunflowers, um, it is very important to do that distance thing to get out of your chair and look at it from a distance because up close that highlight on the petals of the flowers may seem too much up close but then as you walk away from the painting, you might realize it's not enough and you need to increase that contrast. That will get more comfortable the more that you paint um, to be able to push your contrast. So just kind of some future goals to achieve and look forward to as you continue to paint. All right, so again on these petals, just kind of adding the highlight value to the left side of each of the petals. And you can do the opposite Oh, we're actually uh, moving to the burnt sienna. That's right. And going back to the center of our uh, petals. And I'm taking this color and just kind of wrapping around the contour of the bottom of the petals that are touching the center of the sunflower. And then just like we were doing with the petals, add that highlight value on top of the burnt sienna, wipe your brush off, and blend the two colors. Again, sometimes it's fun to... Use your fingers to do this blending. Go right ahead and do that. So we're putting another coat of white on the bone just to kind of increase its opacity. All right, good job. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. 
then we're going to move into black paint small pointy brush i'm going to redo all those outlines and we'll be redoing the outlines on the petals you are welcome to use that sharpie marker for this if it's a bit much but you do want to make sure that your paint is completely dry before you use the sharpie marker and even at this step with the paintbrush um, if you want to let your prior layers dry before you do this black outlining, go right ahead and do that. There we go. I did use the Sharpie markers down there. <laughs> so like I said, many different tools to utilize to create a very similar painting. All right. And like I said earlier, feel free to utilize the traceable and do this on regular paper with crayons or colored pencils. Um, the more that you do this, just the more comfortable you're going to get with your tools. And I tell all my students, you could actually be addicted to worse things than painting or creative exploration. This is a healthy addiction to have. Alright, so now we're doing the outlines on our dog and kind of using a decent amount of pressure with our pointy brush so that way this is a nice thick, bold outline. Nice, he looks good. And we'll be going back around the nose and the eyes. On the eyes, if you happen to cover over that white dot that's overlapping the pupil, um, I do want you to reapply that with pure white paint um, at the very last step of the painting. It is very important to have that catch light in the eyes. Alright, so I'm just going back to some lighter colors and putting dots on top of some of the larger circles I have out there. Feel free to do anything that you want to the rest of your painting. There we go, I did actually put the catch lights back in there. Nice. All right, so great job, you guys. I am so proud of you for taking time out of your day to paint, to spend a little bit of time with me. I want you to keep painting and tag me in um, your social media post. I wanna see the things that you guys create and leave comments and feedback so that way I can create videos that you guys are looking for. Because um, I really do enjoy doing this. It is fun and it's nice to see your guys' comments and photos. Um, and it's just nice to get more people painting. All right, so taking some white here in the final step, any places that you want some extra highlights, um, make some of those petals stand out or the center of those flowers. You can kind of reference where I place them in here and just kind of mimic that on your painting. Great job. All right, hope you guys have a great day. I look forward to painting with you again. Hey guys, I hope your paintings turned out really cool and that you had a lot of fun and made it your own painting. As you're uploading these to social media, please tag me, paint with lovejoy, or send me an email, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. I really wanna see what you guys create. It gives me encouragement to make more videos. It gives me an insight onto how you're interpreting some of the videos that I put together and anything that I need to change or adjust. Um, and again, like I said, it just makes me happy to see what you guys are painting at home. So I'm really, really, really proud of you for painting at home. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Uh, help encourage uh, this channel to your friends, to other people. Help encourage the growth because it is through you guys that I'm going to expand my reach. So thank you so much for taking time out of your day to paint, to get creative. Like I said in the intro, I highly encourage that you find a way to paint or something creative at least once a month. You will see good benefits. Um, if you can kind of incorporate that into your world. So again, thanks for painting with me. I look forward to painting with you in the future. Hope you have a great day. Cheers.
If you're one of my first time painters, la 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 la, let's try it again. Freaking planes. Try that again. Wait for the plane.